You're listening to Scotty and Andrew, and this is Fun with Horror. Oh, hey, hello, all you uh, <laughs> car enthusiasts out there. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Fun with Horror. This is the weekly movie review podcast in which Andrew and I take turns giving each other movies to watch, and then we discuss them the following week. We only have two rules. Number one, whoever chooses the movie must choose a movie they've never seen. And number two, we both have to watch it before we discuss it. Yes. Last week, <laughs> I chose Titan, the French movie by uh, directed by Julia Ducournau. And, uh, of course, stay tuned to the end of this episode to hear what Andrew mm -hmm. will be picking for us next. Yes. Hi, buddy. Hi, bud. So, before anything else... Yes. I've got a few... I've got a couple of uh, quick corrections. <gasps> yes, yeah, right. And also, um, just a little addition. Sorry, I was getting my little phone here. So That's all right. Out. Uh, but yeah, so um, first and foremost, yes, corrections. Two episodes ago, uh, we did Welcome to Raccoon City, Resident Evil. And at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned that uh, Hideo Kojima yes. and Capcom had a parting of ways. Right. Well, I was wrong. My good buddy Danny uh, in the UK pointed out to me that it was Konami, which oh. in my mind, I knew. I just said Capcom. Yep. And uh, so that was just wrong. So yeah, it was Konami. You're right. Okay. And then number two, this one's really interesting. Um, last week for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, this is not a spoiler or anything, mm -mm, but no. one of our, 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 our fan and friend of the show, uh, Michael... F. Myers <laughs> on Twitter. It's a great he, name. He reached out, and he really enjoys the show. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned, he said he wanted to defend Caroline. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you remember, you, you and I mentioned, or mo mostly me, <laughs> I complained that she was told to go call the police and that she just went and sat on the bus and did nothing. Right. Well... He pointed out to me, and I rewatched the scene and the moment. He pointed out to me that she does. He said, I think she does. And if you watch, when she sits down, there is, she makes a motion as if she's reaching into her pocket mm. for something. So it doesn't explicitly show that she calls the police or anything, but it is subtly implied. I mean, I'm still going to fault that they didn't show it enough, mm -hmm. that they maybe they should have made it more of a point to show that, yeah, she took her phone out of her pocket to call the police or something. Right. But nevertheless, corrected. Nice. Well done, not, Michael F. Not gonna, yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. And third, finally, a yeah. uh, friend of the show, Brad, from the uh, Five Dudes with Views podcast. Awesome podcast. He pointed out to me that when the two girls are in the bathroom in the bus in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. and I can't believe you and I missed this, it was Ooh. an homage to The Shining. Oh, totally. <laughs> I went back and watched the scene, and yes, absolutely. <laughs> it, wow. It's like almost shot for shot. How so, did we miss that, dude? Oh my gosh! I'm gonna say it was because of the lighting in the bus, because Fair. the lighting is extremely different from the lighting in The Shining. Mm -hmm. um, the you know it's blue, dark, very blue lights and stuff. Right? But yeah. Oh, so, good call. But that's it. I just wanted to mention those things real quick at the beginning. Nice, perfect, love it. So you, yes. <laughs> Did something Tuesday night. I did. Something huge. Something <laughs> mind-blowing. 
<laughs> no, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get everyone too excited. Um, I am so excited to hear what this is because it's just been building up all week, the, oh, the anticipation geez. for what you did on Tuesday night. Well, let me say that we, <laughs> we, had, we did it first on the weekend. And then we did it again on Tuesday night, and it didn't quite yeah. go through, which I'll explain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> Although with the movie we're talking about. No. Uh, <laughs> no. So uh, <laughs> we watch, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to a conversation we had in like episode two or three of our podcast. Wow. And wow. that was, what movie should I watch with Kylie? Oh, because we watched a movie. Okay. <laughs> we watched da, 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 A Quiet Place. <gasps> With Kylie? With Kylie. Wow. Yes. I know. I was like, I don't know. I can't remember if anyone had suggested that or not. And I apologize if anyone did. But it. I don't think anybody did. I don't think anyone did either. And I was driving that home. that movie is scary. Yeah. But I was driving home and I was like, oh, that would be a good one. She would, I think, enjoy that. And so... Mm. Um, so yeah, so we had watched the first one over the weekend. Then Tuesday, we she was like, I really like that. I want to watch the next one. To which I was like, <gasps> Tuesday night was like the only night we could do it. Um, and so that's why I was like, I can't not do this. We, she's excited to watch a horror movie. We're going to watch one. Uh, so <laughs> however, we got about halfway through and we had all had a long day and none of us really slept well the night before. So about halfway through, we all just crashed. And I mean, we're, we're cozied up. We're watching a movie. We had just had some popcorn. And then, boom, we just all were out. So she still has to watch the second part, which is arguably the best part, in my opinion, yeah, of the yeah. movie. So, um, but yeah, I it, also, uh, I wanted her to chat on here, but she was, I said, do you want to just answer a couple questions? She said, no, 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 no. <laughs> she got real white in her, in her face. And I said, okay, Aww. what about, you know, what if I just talk with you and we record it? And she said, no. And so Cindy goes, what if we pay you? <laughs> and she goes, well, how much? Yes. <laughs> and I said, five bucks. So I actually have a recording of me asking her a few questions. Um, and I was going to play it if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Why don't you play it right now? Okay. Okay, I this is Andrew, and I'm sitting here with who am I sitting with? Me. Well, what's your name? Kylie. Kylie, this is Kylie, and I'm just gonna ask her a little bit about a quiet place, part one, because we didn't quite finish part two, right? No. <laughs> Good. All right. So my first question, Kylie, is, uh, what was your favorite part of a quiet place? When she steps on the nail. Why was that your favorite part? Because um, it, there's blood. <laughs> there's, good girl. All right. The second question is, um, was this movie scary? No, it wasn't at all. Okay. Cool. Good. And then my third question is, did you have fun with horror? Yes. You like the movie? Yeah. And did you, you enjoy it or was it like, eh, it was okay? I enjoyed it because it wasn't, like, scary, but it was a little scary, but, like, it was, like, medium. It was medium? Perfect. Well, thank you, Miss Kylie, for being on our podcast. I love you. No, I think. <laughs> Bye. That was amazing. <laughs> but I'm shocked. I am shocked that she didn't think it was scary at all. Right? I know. And she, she really didn't. I mean, afterwards, she was like, yeah, it was really good. I liked it. And that was it. I mean, there was no... She wasn't like, ooh, that was too much, or that was creepy, or anything. She just, she liked it. I was like, great. So, nice. Yeah, super fun. Well, I'm, I'm glad she liked it, and so there you go. Yeah. Kylie's first horror movie, which we've talked about in more than one episode, actually. Right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and I, I asked you a long time ago, let me know when you guys finally watch a horror movie <laughs> and which one it is. Yep. I had n no idea or inkling <laughs> that it would be a quiet place. Right? Yeah, me either. <laughs> And the possibilities that that presents. <laughs> You're right. Yes. Of course, let it sit and make sure she doesn't have any nightmares. Right. Yeah. But uh, okay. also, um, I just want to say thank you, Kylie, for uh, for doing that. Yeah. And I'd also like to know what language that was at the end when she said, I love you. <laughs> That was that was cool. Like I didn't know she was bilingual. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> it's actually it's a new language called 
uh, being shy. Being shy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shylian. Shylian, yes. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Kylie. We love you. Aw. And love I'm you. so glad. I can't wait till you get to finish A Quiet Place Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. And then you can watch Titan with her. <laughs> what a segue. Shall we talk about the movie? <laughs> Segway. <laughs> it's my friend Scotty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> instead of instead of saying, Scotty, I changed <laughs> it this week. <laughs> Yeah, but then you pointed out that you changed it oh, instead of just letting it. it be organic, and now it's ruined. It's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> so now every week you're going to say it a different way and say, see, I didn't do it. Ah, man, I really dropped the ball on this one. <laughs> but at least I remembered this time. Eh, I got nothing. Anyway, <laughs> buddy, you picked a a very interesting movie this week that has has gotten insane reviews and a lot of conversation, I found. Mm -hmm. A lot. Uh, and that is T10, which came out... Good. Very good. Thank you. Which came out last year, correct? 2021. 2021. Uh, which is, yeah, just like I said, a lot of conversation with this movie. A lot of, a lot of people finding different meanings and all sorts of stuff, which I know you and I are going to talk about. Oh, I've um, got I've got conversation about this movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, but like we all want to know, first things first. What man? What were your thoughts of T Ten? So, T Ten was interesting for me because I watched it during the day. I think I don't know Tuesday maybe mm -hmm. of last week, and as I was watching it. I wasn't really sure how I was going to be feeling about it. Right. And, you know, there's the slight pressure that everybody's like, oh, five stars, best movie ever. Right. And I'm like, okay, I'm not really feeling that yet. Mm -hmm. Then the movie ended, and I liked it more, but I was still thinking about it. Yes. And then I just kept thinking about it <laughs> and thinking about it. And... As I said to you, I said, I think this is an important movie that we look up uh, interpretations of it. Yes. Uh, what the inner meanings of it were. Mm -hmm. And along that journey, I just gradually fell more and more in love with this movie. Nice. And I now, if you know, my list of best horror movies of last year mm -hmm. obviously keeps altering as we watch more of the movies from last year mm -hmm. and i would now put this right up there with candy man wow um wow. i think you know obviously i have a very soft spot for candy man right uh, 2021 i as we as we talked about in that episode i loved it mm -hmm. and that's easily my favorite horror movie of last year one of my favorite horror movies ever now yes yeah um Titan is just barely under it. Wow. Um, as far as best horror movie of last year, I still right. haven't decided where it fits in my overall list of horror movies. Mm -hmm. But I, I can tell you I've been obsessed with it all week. <laughs> um, you know, watched it again. And, uh, and the most interesting thing that I did mm -hmm. is the night that I watched it, or or the day Tuesday that night, I bought Julia Ducournau's previous movie Raw. Yes, right. Which I had never seen, and I watched that. Oh, and strangely enough, the two stories in the movies are very different. But mm -hmm. watching that movie as well only added to my appreciation for Titan. Wow. So yeah. Uh, what did you think, buddy? Wow, high praise for this one. That's great. High, high praise. praise. So uh, this is going to be one movie that I, I don't. <laughs> usually, I'm like, oh, I liked it. I didn't like it. I'm kind of in the phase right now, still, where you were, and I'm, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> 
This is okay. the first time I can say that I'm indifferent to a movie. It's still something I'm thinking about, for sure. Um, one thing I love and appreciate about it is that there are so many interpretations to it, and there are so many conversation starters, which, you know, you and I have talked about this. Just having those conversations with people is fantastic. Hearing other people mm -hmm. love a movie and you love a movie and finding, or even one person doesn't love it and someone else does, having those conversations is beautiful. And this is one of those movies where you will have a conversation with someone and you'll probably learn something in that conversation. Yeah. Which is fantastic. It which is, I'm actually wondering if that's going to happen today. That's what I'm thinking. And that's why I say I'm indifferent because a lot of times when I, when I do have indifferent movies, because it's happened before, conversations that I have really do, that I have with someone that's seen it, obviously, really do help me kind of figure out if I liked it or didn't. <laughs> and so, yeah, I really think today is going to be, is going to at least help me kind of maybe understand things or show me maybe other interpretations that will, I don't know, man. This is, it's, it, this is an interesting one for me. It's very interesting. And I haven't, I haven't had a movie like this in a very long time, especially a horror movie. So... I'm excited for our conversation. Okay. I know that's kind of a nice a political answer. I'm <laughs> kind of going both ways, but I I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So okay, well let's let's get into it then, buddy. Yes, I yes I want I want to talk about this movie very bad. So <laughs> I am going to go ahead and say I have no real issues with this movie. Right. I don't have any like actual negatives because all of my initial negatives there's a reason for those to be in the movie Ooh, okay Fair um enough. but let's also pause and say here is the moment everybody out there if you have not seen titan mm -hmm. uh we are about to go into spoiler territory so yeah be warned here yes. we go and spoilers <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, uh, so for instance, the first half of the movie, mm -hmm. uh, when before she meets uh, Von Song, right. or the captain, the fire captain, yes, um, yeah. she is not a very likable person. No. And <laughs> I was not connecting with the movie for the first half of it. I, I thought it was interesting for sure, mm -hmm. but I was just like, mm. I. I could have turned it off and paused it and come back to it later and not been that torn up over it. But then as soon as it got into the second half of the movie, right, I got really engrossed. And I was very curious as to where it was going to go. Right, yeah. <laughs> and But then I found out that that is just part of the movie. That is uh, purposeful. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to identify with uh, with Alexia at the beginning of the movie. Right. Makes sense. <laughs> um, and I'll get into that in a little bit. And the only... <laughs> I don't really have a fault, but... Mm -hmm. The only other little thing that I'll say that can be even construed <laughs> as a negative... Right. Uh, I know it's not... It wasn't the intention of the creators of the movie, of, of the director and all, but, okay, so when she goes into the car, the Cadillac. Right, yes. After she takes the shower. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And she gets in. Yes. I'm sorry, man, but the Cadillac starts jumping, you know? Yes, yeah. Because they're having sex, and the first <laughs> thing I thought of was Grand Theft Auto. Because <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> what happens in those games. You, you get, Your character is in the car, you call the the prostitute <laughs> over, and she gets in the car, and you just sit there, and your car starts. <laughs> and I was just like, both times I watched this movie, I could not. I was like, oh, like yeah. that's so unfortunate that I can't not think about <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. Dude, that's hilarious. So you know, I I had to <laughs> chuckle. Of course, when it shows her, right, yeah. in the front seat, having sex with this car, basically, yeah, that. That went out the window, but right, right, right. Just for a moment. Um, what about you? Do you have anything specific, or so, do you want to get into? 
I have actually one question about that scene that I'm hoping okay. you can help me out with. Um, <laughs> I think I can. Maybe. So obviously this movie, I mean, obviously there's symbolism and all sorts of stuff. If we take mm-hmm. it as is, though, um, it's unrealistic, <laughs> obviously, what of happens. Of course, of course. Uh, but my question is, was it the car that was knocking on the door after her shower? I'm, tr- I'm still trying to figure that out because she gets those knocks on the door. She's in the shower. She gets the knocks and then goes out there and it's the car with the lights on. And I still am like, was that the car knocking? What does that s- represent? Pretty much. Something? Okay. That's what I was wondering. I just wasn't sure. It was just, I mean, it was the car calling to her. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So maybe, oh, so maybe I like how you phrase that. It could almost even be in her head then. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, okay. Interesting. No, that was my only question. I was like, I just... (laughs) Was it... I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) That was it. (laughs) So, okay, yeah, there's there's a few interpretations. Funny enough, Mm -hmm. I didn't see any detailed interpretations that match my own. Oh, I saw some hints. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, so real quick, Mm -hmm. basic synopsis. A little girl is bugging her dad at the beginning of the movie. Um, and because she's doing it, she's making car noises. They get in a car accident. She has to have a titanium plate put in her head. Right. And immediately, immediately upon leaving the hospital, she has uh, an affection towards the car right. that they're going to. Jump ahead many years, and we find out that she, uh, she, she is a car model. Mm-hmm. Um, and she dances on cars, basically. She, right. she, she's at an underground car show. And then we find out she's also a serial killer. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it starts out, she kills a guy that makes, uh, that tries to take advantage of her. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, oh, this is just self-defense. But then we find out through news stories and stuff that, no, there, there are killings going around and she's she's the killer and right she ends up killing another girl and a whole house of people <laughs> yeah oh my gosh and yeah. then she locks her parents in their bedroom while she sets her house on fire <laughs> and then she runs away she disguises herself as this boy that's been missing for uh over 10 years mm-hmm uh, or longer, I can't remember exactly the time frame. I think it was about ten years, yeah. Uh, but yeah, she disguises herself as Adrian, uh, whose father comes to the police station to identify his son. Mm-hmm. He says, "Yes, that's my son," and so begins the second half of the movie in which she lives with him mm-hmm. uh, as Adrian. Uh, meanwhile, she is growing pregnant. From having sex <laughs> with the car at the beginning of the movie. Right. And instead of leaking normal bodily fluids, yes, she's leaking oil <laughs> out of her orifices. Mm-hmm. Um, and she has this relationship with Vincent, the police captain. No, fire uh, captain. And it's fire captain. Fire captain, sorry. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, it's this mutual need for each other. Right. He needs desperately to have his son back. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's also, he seems just lonely, period. Yeah. And then she, unbeknownst to herself, needs somebody that accepts her and cares about her. Right. And it all culminates at the end when she's very pregnant and the, the, the Vincent mm-hmm. helps her deliver this baby she dies during the childbirth yeah um after splitting apart like her stomach splits apart Ugh. revealing titanium inside like a titanium stomach and then the movie ends with vincent holding this baby who has a titanium spine and also a matching metal plate in its head mm-hmm. and that's how it ends so that yeah. is the movie on the surface basically that was a really good recap man that was perfect it was a quick one i left out a lot of little things but that's right, fine right yeah i just wanted to 
for this movie, I you know <laughs> I normally don't like doing full recaps of a movie, but this one I felt I needed to recap real quick before we get into interpretations and whatnot. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's it, it like you said, it's a very unrealistic movie on the outside, which is right. why I knew that it was a metaphor for other things. Yes. Yep. I had ideas what for what I felt the metaphor was for, but I still went and listened to uh, interviews with the director. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, she she didn't really answer any questions. <laughs> I noticed that too. I did the same thing. I had to go on YouTube or some other sites and and to get help with how to interpret this movie. <laughs> right. Because yeah, she just she gave nothing, man. I mean, well, she gave something, but they were like more complex. Right, right. She was talking about this relationship between the human and the monster and how the titanium inside Alexia's body was this cold, unfeeling thing. Mm -hmm. But that obviously the ending was a rebirth and emerging of the human and the monster. Right. And she was talking about this kind of stuff. And I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get into my interpretation of the movie please yes and it all started with one tweet that i saw and i can't remember the person mm -hmm. it was a tweet it was a simple tweet somebody said this movie is a trans movie and you can't convince me otherwise mm. and the more i thought about it the more to me it felt like the entire movie was actually a metaphor not necessarily for a trans person, mm -hmm. although, yes, I am so happy that some trans people can identify with this movie. Right. But more just basically about a person who is having identity problems. Yes. Yeah. And is suppressing who she really is right. inside or who they really are inside. Mm -hmm. And... The entire movie, there's so many different aspects of the movie that can be seen as different symbolism for a person trying to become their authentic selves. Mm -hmm. But whether it's from outside influences or themselves, they feel that it's being repressed. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then at the end, to me... And I'm going to get into some specific examples of the rest of the movie, but the end obviously culminates in her being eventually completely accepted by Vincent. Right. Who helps her or who helps this person become who they really are. And she, the old Alexia dies and this new person is born. Nice. Who is her authentic self. She's finally accepted so she can finally be who she was meant to be. Right. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's an obvious, obviously a, a trans person can identify with that. Right. But it's also nebulous with the movie. It's also very non-binary because going further towards the surface, obviously she is a very feminine person at the beginning of the movie she disguises herself as as a as a man mm -hmm. while still being feminine underneath the disguise and then at the end she becomes neither right oh that's true and also her true sexual attraction is not towards a specific masculine or feminine it's towards metal right and cars <sighs> so so totally. I I'm going to go a little bit further here okay. if you don't mind. No, please. So I feel like the first half of the movie, the serial killer half of the movie, right, is basically showing her dealing with how outside influences are suppressing who she is. Mm -hmm. She's expected to be this person which is the dancer on the car. Right. Um when anybody starts to get close to her, like the other dancer, Justine, mm -hmm. uh, she hurts them. She pushes them away. And in the movie, she kills them. Yeah. Um, 
and that could be taken literally or it could take be taken as she cuts them out from her life she just decides to kill that relationship immediately right because of her own insecurities or because they're taking advantage of her like the guy leaning into the car to try and kiss her right even her parents who are very cold towards her mm -hmm. her father is always shown as very cold towards her yes she cuts them out she kills them yeah and then she runs away she becomes uh adrian mm -hmm. and at the beginning she's doing it just to run away but then she is picked up by vincent and this starts this amazing relationship between the two of them yes and i love the the direction that this goes in especially watching it a second time mm -hmm. i just ah, oh, it was so good because yeah she's she's still she's got somebody who is not necessarily accepting her for who she is but is showing love for her somebody right. who needs her and at a moment when she almost kills him mm -hmm. she goes back and she tries to cut him out too she ends up helping him instead right which is the beginning of her change yes towards exactly. the better and then i also love how she everything in the movie goes from her killing people to eventually saving a life right when she saves the old lady who's uh i wasn't sure if it was her husband or son i think it was her son who overdosed yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah alexia saves that lady's life right um and then obviously the most momentous part Mm -hmm. is her and Vincent. When Vincent tells her, I don't care who you are, you're mm -hmm. my son. Now, it's a step towards his own acceptance of her, mm -hmm. but it's also still showing his, his reluctance to live in reality. Right. He knows that she's not adrian right exactly but he's going to call her adrian no matter who she is and then when her towel drops and he sees that she's not even male mm -hmm. he just wraps her up yep and is fine and then which was such a beautiful we get, moment i loved that yeah moment i did too mm -hmm. i did too i also thought the moment with the mom when yeah. adrian's mom comes in and she finds alexia completely uh, bear yes yeah uh, I also thought that was a beautiful moment because at first the mom is really angry but then she sees this person in need right this person in pain yep and she says what have you gotten yourself into mm hmm and she helps her and she says look I don't just take care of Vincent yeah you know I don't sweet. care who you are just take care of him yep and then the other scene was obviously the birth scene which yes, i thought yeah. was very beautiful because she starts to blur the the relationship between them she gets into bed with him and she's kissing him and she goes to kiss him romantically in mm -hmm. a way because i think she's falling in love with him right uh because he does treat her differently than anybody ever has exactly yes but then when she tries to when she starts to blur the line he gets up because he's still looking at her as his son right but then as he's walking away she is in complete pain mm -hmm. she calls to him please help me i'm scared mm -hmm. and at that moment it it switches inside him he stops he stops loving her because of who he wants her to be and starts loving her for who she is right and he accepts her and and even when she's in labor and he calls her Adrian and she says my name's Alexia and then he from that point on he calls her Alexia yeah yep. and then he helps her he helps her give birth to this new self mm -hmm. this new person and he holds that new person and 
the movie ends. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 my view of this movie and I, I don't know if that made sense, but No, wow. it did. It absolutely did. Um and I uh, see my thoughts are very similar and I watched again I saw like I said there was so many interpretations, which again is something I love about this movie because it can be mm-hmm. taken a lot of different ways. Um, and none are right and none are wrong, which is great. It's how you interpret things, um, you know, I, for the most part. Uh, yeah, yeah. But so how one video I really liked, and again, I, I don't, I'm not sure who it was, and I apologize, but it was on YouTube. But one thing that I liked is, in a nutshell, and, and I agree with it, is that this movie overall theme is, is kind of like what you said. I mean, is almost accepting your true self. Um, and a couple things that he mentioned, which I went, oh, that's, that's, that's good, is that, um, you don't have to be one thing, you know, for instance, you don't have to be like Vincent is kind of this like gruff, you know, quote unquote manly man, you know what I mean? If, if you will. Yeah. But there's these moments in the movie where he's dancing which could be, and this is kind of what he says in the video, and this is, you know, quote unquote, which could be considered more feminine, maybe, mm-hmm. depending on who you're talking to, right? But when he does those dances, his true self comes out. He's happy. He's excited. He's having a good time. He's being his almost like his best self by accepting that he doesn't have to be this one thing. He can be a few, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it's the same with. Um, Alexia, where, again, at the beginning, she's like this, you know, all, all female, you know, uh, et, et cetera, et cetera. I can't think of a good way to say it, but by becoming... Um, Very oh, outwardly feminine. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, by becoming, I'm totally drawing a blank on Adrian, excuse me. Adrian. Um, and allowing herself to kind of uh, give herself more of these, again, quote unquote, male traits if you will Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she becomes a better person she becomes her better self because she's accepting all parts of her rather than having to focus on this one part which i was like i I, again that kind of resonated when hearing him say that i went oh that's that makes sense i like that interpretation of just accepting yourself you don't have to be this one thing you know you can allow yourself to be anything and yeah. it allows you to be happy. It allows you to be yourself, um, which I like. I just thought that was a nice interpretation. Um, hopefully, I didn't butcher that when I just said all that. <laughs> but but uh, did that make sense? <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah, I mean, I think at first she is trying to disguise the female, the feminine side of her. Right, yes, correct. With the male. But then she she does almost start to feel... Like the masculine and the feminine start to start to merge. Right. The longer she is disguised as Adrian. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know the other thing is that the director did actually say a few things that kind of helped reinforce my interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, she said that she, uh, and I might say her name wrong, Agat yeah. Rousset. Mm-hmm. is the actress who plays Alexia. Yes. And she, uh, Julia Ducournau, mm-hmm. amazing director, by the way. Yeah, uh, yep. I'm in love with her work now, especially <laughs> after watching both movies. Right. She purposely hired an unknown actress or an unknown actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Agat has, had never been in anything else. I heard that, yeah. Crazy. And she she did that because when you see another actor whether a male or female actor you are their their gender is predetermined mm-hmm. by you mm-hmm. so you've you've seen this person portray this more masculine part she wanted an actor to come in whose gender was not predetermined mm mm-hmm. mhm um she was not predetermined as either a more feminine actor or a more masculine actor Right. Um, she also, and this is something I subliminally noticed, mm-hmm. she used lighting in a lot of cases to subvert 
stereotypes, gender stereotypes. Oh, really? Like at the beginning, in the car show, when you're seeing all these female bodies mm-hmm. uh, mixed in, the lighting is very blue. It's got this hard, masculine, blue quality to it. Mm, interesting. That was on purpose. Uh, the other, but the one I noticed more was when she filmed the firefighters. Ah, you're right. And <laughs> I actually wondered if this was uh, one, because uh, I've heard of firefighting units that uh, they they recruit more homosexuals. Oh, they have uh, like gay uh, firefighting units. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I've cool. I've heard. I've heard, I, you know, I don't know how true it is. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm just being bluntly honest here. I don't know how true it is. I've just heard that there are some out there. Mm-hmm. And so I was wondering if in this movie this was going to be revealed to be more of a, a gay firehouse. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. But at the same time, Julia Ducournau used uh, like pinkish magenta lighting. Yep and slow motion to subvert the masculine stereotype that firefighters usually have. Mm. And it continues on to Vincent, the firefighter, mm-hmm. um, the, the captain, like you mentioned, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. And, but of course, when, <laughs> when you get to the moment where the firefighters lift up, uh, Alexia <laughs> yes. slash Adrian yeah. onto the, firefighting engine Mm -hmm. she lets down her guard right and you can see the looks in all their eyes they're they're very confused yes um Mm -hmm. so yeah i thought that was very interesting the uh there was also there was also another quote and and i wrote this down oh yeah that julia used to describe vincent and alexia and she said they are two people who need each other so bad they're willing to look past what the world has made them to be. Mm, that's a good quote. I thought that, yeah. I wow. thought that was amazing. That's great. Huh. So. Yeah. This is... <laughs> <laughs> one, you know what, what surprised me, and we've talked about it a little bit, but like, you know, when you first start this movie, it really does seem like, oh, she's a serial killer, um... This is what the movie's going to be about. A, a serial killer on the loose, you know, we not knowing much yeah. about it, that's just what you would expect. But it really that second half in my I, you know, it's a drama. It's a family drama that <laughs> movie, which is obviously there's some other things in there, but I mean overall that was what I how I interpreted it when watching it. I said, I don't know if I you know, this isn't like a is it's not a slasher right now or anything. I just feel like I'm watching this drama of this these two people that are genuinely in need of someone, of something, of love, um, which was not how I expected this movie to turn halfway yeah. through, uh, which was very interesting, very interesting change of events. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I loved it, and there's <laughs> lots of little things uh, that I have notes on. Y- yeah, yeah. That I think were amazing. Um uh, one of the other things that Julia mentioned, um, and this doesn't have to do with the whole metaphor. Right. She understood that in the first half of the movie, uh, that the audiences were not going to be able to identify with Alexia. Mm, okay. Uh, or that most audiences wouldn't. Right. So she used one common thing, and because I think somebody in one of the interviews asked her, she seems uh she seems to have a fascination with bodily pain. Yes. Yeah. And uh she uses that as a way for the audience to connect with the character because no matter how little you identify with Alexia, mm-hmm. when pain is caused, yeah, you identify completely cuz pain everybody feels physical pain. Absolutely. And definitely the hardest part to watch in this entire movie for me yeah. Was when she's breaking her own nose. Oh, oh. my gosh. Yes, I have that note. Oof, duh. <laughs> oh. The second time I watched the movie, I actually looked away. Yeah. I, 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 and it, the sound was <laughs> oh. 
terrible enough. Yes. I looked away, and even even when I heard the crunch and the sound, I was like, oh, oh God. Oh. And how That's she really, does it. Oh, just awful. Yeah. Awful. She's On trying to do it with her hands. She yeah. realizes it's not going to be strong enough. And she looks down at the porcelain sink and just slams her head into it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, that one hurt. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um. The second the when she kills the guy at the beginning, yes, yeah, I did notice that. Uh, like, and this is something I kind of noticed at the beginning, but the second time I watched it, knowing how many metaphors were in this movie, right? It was interesting that the guy is spitting up like this white dribble, right? When she kills him mm-hmm. and she's holding him, and man, it really does resemble uh, jizz. Uh, fair on enough. On her shoulder. Yeah. And oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, that's so. There's there's metaphors about that right there. Right. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. I will say though. Yes. <laughs> side note that that guy. There's a shot, uh, and I love when movies do this. When you just see something very quickly, and you go, oh, oh, oh what was that? Um where you see her walking to her car and the camera's kind of following her and you just see him in the alley for maybe half a second. I thought it was brilliantly done because it just... Before it he chases her? Before he chases her. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just thought that was such a, a, a great shot because it sets it up. You, you, oh, yeah. It makes you uneasy already. You know something's coming. Um, well, you're also uneasy when you see him and you realize that right. this is... Because he's the one that asks her for a selfie inside the car show. Right, right. Um. And by the way, so that's the other thing. Mm-hmm. I love that scene. I am a sucker for single sh- single shots. Like yeah. Oh, no yes. cuts, mm-hmm. oneers. Uh, that that whole sequence where she walks into the car show mm-hmm. and the camera, it's a single shot. The camera's following her. Right. And the camera will drift away from her to show other performers or people at the car show. Right. And then it just, the camera moves so fluidly to show those people and then to move away from them to come back to Alexia. Mm -hmm. And then, oh my God, (laughs) when Alexia gets to the Cadillac, her car basically, right, with the flames on it, it's just brilliant. The, The way the camera moves away from her it's it's a low shot and it focuses on the side of the cadillac as it's moving and she has disappeared and then it comes around to the front of the car moves up and now she's suddenly on the hood of this car right. in her dancing outfit and right. the just you know obviously it was either a very very subtle edit or she as soon as she was out of the camera's view she just runs around and right takes off her jacket and gets into position. And yep. then the one shot continues through her entire dance. Right. I have watched that scene, just that one scene over <laughs> and over again because it's just so such a great shot. Yep. I yeah. And and the song that's playing is <laughs> uh oh of course now I forget the name of the song, but it's a band called The Kills. Mm. And I am obsessed with that song. It's in my <laughs> head right now. <laughs> it was in my head all night last night as I went to sleep. Nice. I can't get it out of my head. I'm <laughs> obsessed with that song. That's awesome. <laughs> and I'm also obsessed with the song Lighthouse by Future Islands. Right, yeah. That's playing when the firefighters are dancing. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I love that entire that entire shot. Yeah. I'm with you. One single shots are always, always a joy to watch. <laughs> Watching it a second time, there's so many c- moments and scenes that I love. Mm-hmm. I love, I love Agat's acting as mm-hmm. Alexia. She's got this look, this like stern, wide-eyed like look that's just I can't believe what I'm looking at, and don't look at me like this. And what are you doing? Right. All in a single look, and it's just so amazing and the metamorphosis that she goes through Mm -hmm. from this outwardly beautiful feminine person to 
her disguise as Adrian. Right. It's just it's just awe inspiring in the movie. Right. Oh my god. And uh, I still I would, got so much. I would say <laughs> to Vincent Linden, who plays Vincent, was fantastic. Yeah. Honestly, both both leads in this movie were perfectly cast. Yeah. And they yeah. both were phenomenal. Absolutely. I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know, my friend, Ooh, from what? some of the interviews, that uh-huh. three three of the characters' names were used in Raw as well? In fact... Oh, really? The main character in Raw is Justine. Oh, huh. And okay. she was played by the exact same actress <laughs> who played Justine in this movie, uh, Garance Mil- Marillier. I think is how you pronounce Mm -hmm. it. Um, Yeah, she played Justine in both movies. But, so people obviously asked uh, Julia Ducournau if there, what kind of connection there was. And she, they're not the same character, but she likes to think that there is an evolution of that person. Oh, nice. You know, they become this other person in a different story. Ah, I like that. I like that. Um, Alexia is the name of the main character in Titan and it's the k- name of uh, uh, Justine's sister in Raw. Nice. And then the other one is Adrian, who is the main male character in Raw, and mm. obviously it's who Alexia disguises herself as in Titan. Right. Uh, so that that was very cool and That's interesting. Cool. Interesting. Um, I love the sound design. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything. There's so many moments in this movie with brilliant sound design. Mm-hmm. The beginning, showing the underside of the car and the car's parts as you're hearing the song and you hear like this deep bass rumble. Yes. Yep. Where you feel like the car is alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, loved it. Um, what else? What else? What else? There was one. <laughs> I will say there's one yeah. scene that I... Well, there's a few, but the one that I really, really loved mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. when Alexia is in the closet and she puts the dress on. Mm. She's, you know, yeah. her stomach's kind of starting to form. She puts the dress on, or her, you know, her pregnancy is starting to show, I should say. Um, and Vincent comes in, she grabs the pillow and puts it on, on her stomach. And I just love that shot of because again she's so she does it really great without having to say anything but it's that fear I've been caught I he's gonna know who I am but I love that he sits her down opens the old photo book and there's pictures of Adrian as a kid wearing that same dress and I love that his line is how could anyone say that you aren't my son see and I think that's that to me was brilliant especially my second viewing Mm -hmm. because in my second viewing when Vincent goes to the police station and sees Alexia mm-hmm. as Adrian in the in the room, there is a moment, and it, it's I think it's just brilliant acting mm-hmm. on the part of Vincent Landon. Um, to look at, you're, there's just this moment where you see in his face and his eyes that. In his heart, he knows that this is not his son. Yes, exactly. But he decides, he decides that this is going to be his son. Right. And he's going to deal with that illusion. And I think that moment that you're talking about mm-hmm. is also brilliant because I think he's he loved seeing seeing her in the dress because it reinforces his own illusion. Yes. Yes. Very good. I agree. So when he mm-hmm. s- when he says that, how can anybody tell me that you're not my son? He's kind of saying that to himself. Yes. Very good. Oh. So that's yeah, good. I liked. I liked. There were there were a few moments, and if you watch every scene with them, you can see him trying to reinforce the illusion. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's it comes in when Rayon. I I'm not sure how you say his name, but mm-hmm. the the. It's it's almost like this other uh, firefighter who saw the captain as a father figure. Right, exactly. Yep. And then Alexia comes in and takes his place, and he's not overly upset at first until he starts to realize that 
Alexia is not who she is. She's saying she is right. She's not Adrian. Mm-hmm. And then he tries to protect the captain. I still don't think it's fully jealousy. I just think he's trying to protect the captain. He really loves the captain. That's how I took it. Yeah, I actually I didn't take it as jealous. I took it more yeah. as he's nervous about what's going to happen and yeah. why she's doing this. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And when he tries to tell the captain, the captain hushes him up real quick. Mm-hmm. You'll never talk about my son. Ever. Yep. You know? So the captain is constantly trying to reinforce his own illusion of who he wants this person to be. Right. Very which good. just makes the ending where he fully accepts her mm-hmm. um, even more beautiful to me. Yeah. And I, ju- I, and I do love that that theme throughout it is really you need people. You need love. You know what I mean? Without it, without having love, Alexia was a serial killer. You know what I mean? And is it Vincent? How do you say his name? Because I I just been saying Vincent, but it Vincent's fine. But Vincent. it's uh, you know in French they say Vincent. Vincent. Um, <clears throat> that he's broken. I mean, he's he's a broken man. And once yeah. they come together and show that love, how they change. I just think that was. It just yeah. It, it just is. It's really beautiful. <laughs> it really he's is. broken. He's broken as a lonely person. He right wants his son back. Mm-hmm. But he's also he's an. At, you can see in his body, mm-hmm. he's he's also broken because he's dealing with his age. Right. Yes. He's getting older. He wants to keep stay strong physically, mm-hmm. and you can see that in him trying to take the steroids. Right. So yeah. he's not accepting who he is either. Exactly. Exactly. So I think I think I think being able to accept Alexia as who she is and who she's becoming Mm -hmm. completely accept her um, helps him accept himself as well. Right. Man. Yeah. This movie, not, not what I was expecting. (laughs) I mean, I I knew a little bit, but boy, yeah, just not, ah, it's hard to describe, man. It's just, (laughs) this is one, we always recommend movies, obviously, but this is one where it's like, you, you almost have to see it. Like you just, ah, man, yeah, yeah. But my <laughs> recommendation for this movie would be, mm-hmm. would be, I absolutely recommend it. Right. Be warned that it's not a comfortable watch. Agreed. Yes, absolutely. But also look further than what you're seeing. Right. Very good. I mean, obviously, one of the biggest clues that this movie it goes way deeper than the surface level is that nobody seems. Nobody seems to be concerned that Alexia is leaking this right. black oily fluid. Right. You know, when the, when the mom sees her when she comes in, she's not she's not concerned that Alexia has these abnormalities. She's just concerned about this person that's in pain. Right. And that's why I see it more as somebody struggling to be who they really are. Mhm. And you know, while while it's not specific, I do think of trans people because I know that not speaking personally, but from mm-hmm. listening to accounts, that right. is what trans people deal with all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Becoming their authentic selves and who they are inside, you know? Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, the last thing I'm going to say yeah, was the please. weirdest quote from Julia Ducournau mm-hmm. um, that... And this is what I was talking about earlier when she says these complex metaphors for the movie that I still don't even get. But she <laughs> said, um, there is a huge metaphor between metal and fire in the film that are representing Gaia and Uranus, who are the two gods of earth and sky who gave birth to the Titans, which is what happens at the end. Whoa. Wow. And there you go. Okay. That's the movie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that, that, that's on the poster. <laughs> wow. Uh let's 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 go ahead and move on. I think I think we've said yeah. a lot. Yeah. I think we're ready for our three questions. All right, let's do it. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. 
So, my friend, we'll jump in. Question number one. What was your favorite death slash kill in this movie? <laughs> I think, I don't know. Well, we'll s- I, I do know. Um, I'm wondering, I think we might agree. I don't know. I don't know. Let's hear it, man. Yeah, let's hear. I mean, I think the best kill, mm-hmm. looking at it from a horror movie standpoint, mm-hmm. was one of the housemates <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and the stool yep. being shoved into his mouth and pushed into his head. Yes. Uh, I think that whole scene was amazing. Was that your favorite kill? Yep. Was that what you were yep, going to say? Yeah, that was what I was going to say. But yeah, agreed. That whole scene was, I, I love her reaction to her. She's like, how many are you? Or how many of you are there? Yeah. <laughs> it was and great. See, that, there we get into interpretations. I, re- I was reading this one article online mm-hmm. where somebody mentioned that she was at a party. And I was like, I don't think that was a party. I just felt like she was going to hang out with this girl. Right. You know, who she was experimenting with, with Mm -hmm. her sexuality. And she just had all these roommates. That's what I, that's what I got from it. And like, yeah, like the, the article made it sound like Alexia went in there to kill all these people. And it's like, no, she went, she was going to kill the girl and then she got caught. So she killed the next person. Right. Yeah. Got caught doing that. So she went to kill them, and it was just a comedy of errors right there. Right. I I, I agree with that. I don't, I don't agree that was a party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I loved that whole scene. It was very uh, dark, dark and comedic. It was, yep. All right, so question, and yeah, I agree with you. That was mine too, but question number two, was this movie scary? No, mm-hmm. I don't, I wouldn't call it scary. I'd call it very, very uncomfortable. Agreed. That's a beautiful and, way to describe and it. And <laughs> purposely so. Right, exactly, it. yep. I agree. And if you see Raw, you haven't seen Raw. I'm I guessing. have not yet. Mm-mm. If you see Raw, you'll feel the same type of discomfort in different in a different situation. Interesting. Okay. I figured but I, do I want would. you to watch it sometime. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure I will. Absolutely. Okay. Question three, my friend. And I th- I think we know, <laughs> but did you have fun <laughs> with horror? <laughs> I thought this movie was amazing. I wouldn't call it fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the housemate scene. <laughs> right. But that was kind of fun. Yes. Uh, and maybe the car show at the beginning, just the, the pure brilliance of that shot mm-hmm. and that whole sequence, I thought was kind of fun. I wouldn't say I have fun with horror. I would right. say this is one of the better movies, one of the best movies I saw last year, period. Mm-hmm. Um, easily, easily one of the top horror movies I saw last year. And one mm-hmm. of... It is hard to call it a horror movie. Agreed. Yep. But it does have horror aspects. And I'm going to say, no spoilers, but Raw is the same. It's, ah, okay. It's kind of like Swallow. It's oh, put yeah. in this horror genre, and it's got horrific aspects. I, I think Raw and Titan mm-hmm. definitely are easier placed in the horror genre. Oh, yeah. Yep. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, great movie <laughs> <laughs> that I'm still thinking about and I'm kind of obsessed with. Like, I, I loved watching it a second time. Nice. Uh, what about you, buddy? <sighs> I, maybe. <laughs> no, I, I definitely am with you. I didn't have fun. Like, I wasn't sitting there, like, with a, a grin on my face going, oh, this is hooray. Um, <laughs> but it's it's one that I'm still thinking about like you. And I think I'll continue to think about it for a while. Um, I enjoyed it, but again, I I still am not sure about it. This is one I I need time, man. I really it, like I said, this is a weird one for me where I just I need <coughs> time to absorb it a bit. Well, more. how how did this conversation? Do you think? Do you it, think this conversation itself affected your outlook of? The I movie? think so. Yeah, absolutely. I I definitely like it more. And again, not that I'm saying I disliked it. I like it. I think the conversation was it was nice. It definitely helped me to interpret a few things. Um, yeah. So this was good, absolutely. But yeah, it, this is just a, it's a this one's tough for me, man. <laughs> this one is a very yeah. interesting movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, and to be clear, mm-hmm. everything I said earlier. That was my interpretation. Right. And yes. If yeah. if somebody out there has a different interpretation, that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And that's 
that's the beauty of this movie is that everybody can see something different in the movie. Right. So uh, yeah, I would I just want to stress that that was my interpretation. And I would love, kind of jumping later, but I would love to see people's interpretation on online, you know, on our Facebook or yeah. Twitter or email. I'm I'm curious. I'm genuinely curious what people how people interpreted this movie and their thoughts on it. I'm, I would love I to think, see uh, that. I think we'll get a couple of comments. I hope so. I really, I really hope we do because this is a, this is a very interesting movie. Like I said, so I'd love that. I'm going to go watch that opening scene again <laughs> scene and listen to that song. Nice. <laughs> one of the best scenes. That's uh, I, that. Honestly, that scene is going to go down as one of my favorite scenes in movie history. Period. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Loved dude. it. Loved it. Oh, beautiful. Okay, well, that leaves one last thing. <laughs> now that we've watched Titan and we've discussed it, Andrew. Yes. Andrew. Yes. Andrew. <gasps> That's me. <laughs> it's your turn. <gasps> What's our next movie? All right. Well, I think we're going into a, a territory that's not quite as deep as what we just discussed. But we're jumping back into some slasher. And uh, fortunately, you actually brought this up recently, um, this movie. And fortunately, neither, er, neither of us have had it ruined for us yet. And that's mm-hmm. 2021's Scream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. See, this is one of those things, like just like <laughs> Texas Chainsaw, where I'm... Hoping, because <laughs> remember, everybody, we do not discuss this beforehand. No, we don't. Nope. Uh, I don't know what Andrew's going to pick, and when I pick a movie, Andrew has no idea what I'm going to pick. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't keep us from trying to send mental energy <laughs> to each other. Like, Andrew, please pick Scream. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, neither of us have seen it. Nope. We, neither of us felt comfortable enough going to a movie theater mm-hmm. when it came out because of Omicron. Omicron. No, Omicron, not Omnicrom. Oh, oh I was. I, I don't know how to say <laughs> Omnicrom. It. I thought it was. Are, were we not talking Transformers? Uh, yes, we were. <laughs> okay, yeah. Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bay made us feel uncomfortable with going to a movie theater. Yep, yep. Thanks a lot, Damn Michael, it, Michael Bay. Bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we didn't feel comfortable soon. Uh, but Scream finally came out on home video this yes. past weekend. So, yay. And, and that's and that just for everyone out there, that's kind of the only way to watch it right now is through rentals. Um, mm-hmm. Amazon, Apple, anywhere you would rent a movie. Uh, but yeah, or purchase. Or, or, or purchase. Yep, or purchase. But yeah, no streaming or anything like that at, at this point. So don't uh, you dare. Don't you dare. But yeah, yay. I'm excited for this one, man. Like I said, I can't. I'm surprised at least for me, that it hasn't been spoiled yet. So, Now, do you think Scream will... Uh, and <laughs> to be clear, we're talking about the new Scream. Yes, yes, yep. <laughs> yes, the one that last year, 2021. Do you think uh, Sydney and Gail will represent Gaia and Uranus? <laughs> yes, and I and think... give birth to the Titans? Yep, and that is who the killer is. Spoiler alert, it's a Titan. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Me too. I'm excited. <laughs> well, uh, I think yeah. that's about it for this very, very amazing episode. That yeah, was man. I, I was really looking forward to discussing Titan. Yeah, definitely one of our more deeper uh yeah. conversations for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah. um everybody out there, thank you so much for listening and for talking to us and commenting and <laughs> we we just get more listeners every week um it's just been it's been fun uh if you love the show if you like it please do us a favor leave leave a review yes, on please. itunes apple podcasts it will really help us get out there and get get more people let everybody you know uh tell people about us yes um, please yeah I mean, I feel like more people discover us every week, but at the same time, it helps if everybody that likes us tells their friends about us. Mm-hmm. 
And one thing, these actually. Two, these two idiots that talk about <laughs> movies. I had by s- the way, real quick. <laughs> yeah. By the way, <laughs> yeah, I actually had a comment delete, uh, not <gasps> reported, but Facebook uh, banned a comment that I wrote. What? It was just a reply. And all I said was that men are idiots. <gasps> Whoa. And their algorithm uh, got me. Oh, my gosh. Of course, a girl right after me commented, I agree that men are idiots, and she didn't get banned at all. It was just me. <laughs> Whoa. So if you're a man, do not do not <laughs> say that men are idiots. <laughs> Facebook will slap you on the hand. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh-huh. That was a... <laughs> that was a tangent. I love it. <laughs> what uh, were you about to say, buddy? <laughs> no, I was just gonna say too. For uh, recently, someone said, "I I don't know. I want to listen to your podcast, but I I don't like scary movies." And I said, "Well, you don't have to. <laughs> we we discuss it. We talk about it. We we just we kind of make it more light, and and we have fun with it. That's why it's fun with horror. So if you if you know people that are like that or that are go, I don't know about." Horror movies, let them know. It, this is fun. It's fun with horror. We're not we're not yeah. scaring anybody with this. We're. we're I mean, talking. of course, I do. Th- I do think, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that don't listen to certain episodes because they haven't seen the movies, and that's yes. fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. But just listen to the intro and then press stop. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that works for us. Go <laughs> watch the movies because they're all. Amazing movies. Every yes. every single movie that we've covered is five stars. Yes. Wouldn't you agree, Andrew? Absolutely. Every one of them. <laughs> every single one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Next week, Scream 2021. Yay. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We love you all. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Macarena, oh Macarena.